Hello everyone. I say welcome again to our channel. I miss doing this. It's been almost a year since my last upload, but I'm glad to receive thank you messages from you, as well as requests to discuss this subject. Well, sales is rather a fun subject. This is very useful in everyday life. Kasi, di ba nga, in our day-to-day -day life, we either sell or buy a thing or an item, right? Each one of us has been engaging in a sale transaction almost every day. So what are we waiting for? Let's begin. Let me start this by giving you an example. Poggy owns a Sari Sari store. Pumunta si Ganda sa anyang tindahan and was looking for, say, a shampoo. Nakita niya ang brand ng shampoo that she was looking for and asked Poggy for how much it is. Then Poggy says, 5 peso for one sachet. So Ganda pays 5 peso. And Poggy, binigay niya kay Ganda yung shampoo. That's it. That is a good example of a contract of sale. It's as simple as that. The moment Ganda pays 5 peso and Poggy give the shampoo, the contract of sale is consummated. However, simplicity turns into complexity the moment a legal issue arises. And these legal issues... Ito yung i-discuss natin. Let's try to make everything simple para mas madali rin siyang intindihin. But then, kilalanin muna natin si contract of sale. Now, Article 1458. By the contract of sale, one of the contracting parties obligates himself to transfer the ownership and to deliver a determinate thing and the other to pay therefor a price certain in money or its equivalent. A contract of sale may be absolute or conditional. If meron mang provision sa law on sales that I will advise to you to memorize, it would be Article 1458. Kasi nga, this article provides for the legal definition, the concept, as well as the essential elements of the contract of sale. Nandiyan din yung pag-identify ng parties to the contract and the primary obligations. So, let's start with the legal definition. If you are asked to define sales, that is Article 1458, okay? Yun yung ibigay Now, let's discuss more on the concept of sale. Ang gusto kong sabihin dito is that, Sale is a special contract. Kasi sa totoo lang, sale eh, is a contract, di ba? Just like what we learn when we discuss obligations and contracts, if you remember, yung requisites ng contract, COC, naaalala niyo pa ba? Concept of the contracting parties, tapos O for object certain, and then yung last na C is for or cost of obligation, right? Applicable pa rin naman yun, Okay. But then, but ko na sabi na sales is a special contract? It's because there is a different set of provisions under the civil code that deals with it. Meron talaga siyang rules applicable para sa kanya lang. Kaya special contract siya. But then, it is still a contract. Okay? Meron na lang separate or different sets of provisions na nagdi-deal sa kanya. Okay? If we look into Article 1458 na rin, makikita mo din dito yung um, parties ng contract, di ba? Na-identify din rito kung sino ba yung parties ng contract of sale. First is yung vendor or yung seller. Tapos yung vendi or yung buyer. And further, nandyan rin yung primary obligations ng dalawang parties, di ba? Si vendor, ang kanyang obligation is to transfer the ownership and to deliver the thing that is the object of sale. Now, si vendi naman, 
yung kanyang obligation is to pay the full price or the full purchase price at the agreed time. The very essence of a contract of sale is actually the transfer of ownership in exchange for the price paid or promised, okay? Yung pag-transfer talaga ng ownership, kapalit yung pagbabayad, yan yung essence ng contract of sale. Now, let's discuss what are the characteristics of a contract of sale. First, consensual, meaning it is perfected by mere consent. Hindi kagaya ng mga real contracts like contract of pledge or deposit na yung perfection is upon delivery. Okay? Tapos second, characteristics ng contract of sale, it is bilateral and reciprocal. Meaning, both parties are bound by obligation. Yung contract of sale ay nag-create ng reciprocal rights and obligations on both parties. Both seller and buyer has its rights and obligations. Okay? Hindi lang yung isang parties ang may obligation, but both parties, the seller or vendor and the buyer or vendee. The third characteristics that I want to discuss is ano, yung commutative. Yung sale raw, yung contract of sale is commutative, meaning the value exchange is considered or at least presumed to be equivalent sa price. Although may exception nga to in case of aleatory contracts like yung sale ng lotto tech tickets. Okay? Now, another characteristics is it is principal, meaning it is not dependent upon the existence of the other of other contracts, as distinguished from accessory contract naman. Okay, principal, hindi siya dependent sa ibang kontrata. Now, oneros, meaning merong valuable consideration, hindi siya gratuitous, kasi oneros siya. Tapos, number six, nominate. When you say nominate, as distinguished from innominate, meaning meron siyang name, meron siyang pangalan, which is provided in the civil code. Yun nga, sale nga yung pangalan niya, di ba? Meron siyang special designation sa batas, unlike nga doon sa mga innominate contracts, okay? That's it. I think, characteristics of sale or contract of sale now, let's proceed with the elements of the contract of sale. Actually, meron tayong tinatawag na essential elements or yung requisites, tapos natural elements, and then accidental elements. So, the natural or I mean essential elements, which is nabanggit na natin kanina in passing. But then again, to emphasize, let's discuss further. So, yun nga, essential elements ng contract of sale, COC, almost similar pa rin naman ng COC, pero dito may specific, ano talaga, letter A or number 1, consent or meeting of the minds, that is, consent to transfer ownership in exchange for the price. Second, dapat meron ding determinate subject matter, and third, meron siyang price certain in money or its equivalent. So, it need not be money palagi yung price, okay? Pwede na namang its equivalent. So, example, et. if si Pogi nag-offer siya to buy Ganda's um, Mitsubishi Expander with plate number one, ABC123, for say 500,000 pesos. Now, si Ganda, in accept niya yung offer ni Pogi. And so, binigay niya kay Pogi ang susi ng sasakyan niya. The expander, the Mitsubishi expander, is sold to Ganda. I mean, to Pogi. So, in this example, yung consent is manifested by Pogi's offer to buy Ganda's expander and Ganda's acceptance. Now, yung object of sale is yung Mitsubishi expander ni Ganda na may plate number ABC123. Diba? 
a determinate subject matter. And third, yung consideration dito is yung 500,000 pesos, which is a price certain in money. Okay? So, absence any of these elements will render the contract of sale null and void. The same way with the contract paninaman. Absence any essential requisites, then the contract is void. Anyway, let's proceed with natural elements. Ito yung mga elements na inherent in a contract. These are integral part or built-in elements of the contract of sale, ika nga, which are deemed to exist in a certain contracts, like yung warranty against hidden defects. Okay? Now, yung accidental elements. Ito naman yung mga elements which may be present or absent in the stipulation. Ito ay nagdidepende sa will ng parties. As to kung mag magiging present or absent pa siya. Now, before we moved on to Article 1459, wag muna natin, or wag rin naman natin kalimutan yung last paragraph ng Article 1458. Sabi, sale can be absolute or conditional. When you say absolute, meaning no condition attached. Tapos when you say conditional, obviously my condition. Like in a case of sale with a right of repurchase or just simple, simply meron lang talagang suspensive condition. Okay? Actually, meron pang discussion as to the kinds of sales. But then, I will not discuss it here na kasi parang self, very self-explanatory na siya masyado. Like, yung kind of sales as to the nature of the object, di ba? Pwede siyang sale ng real property or sale ng personal property. Basahin nyo na lang, kaya nyo na yan, promised. So, for now, punta tayo sa Article 1459. The thing must be leased and the vendor must have a right to transfer the ownership thereof at the time it is delivered. So, Article 1459 talks about two mandates or two important mandates. The lawfulness of the object and the rights to transfer ownership. Sabi, the thing or yung object ng sale dapat daw leased. Leased means lawful okay meaning the object must be within the commerce of man it must not be unlawful kasi if yung object ng contract is unlawful illicit ano ba yung mangyayari well natural yung contract is null and void diba so example the sale of marijuana or shabu since yung object ng contract of sale is unlawful then that contract of sale is void, null and void. Okay? So, ano pa ba? Ano pang example? Yes, yung vote buying. Malapit na yung election. The object is illicit. So, void rin yun. Okay? Well, aside from that, yung Article 1459 also talks about the right of the vendor or the seller to transfer ownership of the thing or object. At the time, the object or the thing is delivered to the buyer or the vendee. So, actually, ito yun. What you want to focus on Article 1459 is the clause about the right to transfer ownership. Makikita natin sa Article 1459 na yung ownership ng seller sa bagay na binibenta niya ay hindi naman kailangan at the time of the perfection of the contract of sale. Okay? It is not one of the elements for its perfection. Ang ni-require ni Article 1459, dapat si seller ay may right to transfer ownership at the time na yung bagay or yung thing ay i-deliver. Okay? Malinaw? Para lang klaro, baka mas naguluhan kayo sa sinabi ko. Okay? Yung transfer... Or, I mean, it is an essential element in a contract of sale na yung seller must be the owner of the object sold. Okay? Dapat, owner siya ng object or ng item na yan para naman matransfer niya yung ownership. Kasi nga, di ba, one cannot sell what he does not own. So, dapat, owner siya. 
Pero, yung requirement ng ownership is hindi kailangan at the time of perfection. Kailangan lang siya at the time of delivery. Okay? Dapat owner siya para matransfer niya yung ownership. Pero hindi siya kailangan at the time ng perfection pa lang ng contract. Um, kailangan siya doon sa time ng delivery. Okay? There can be a sale even if at the time of the perfection ng contract, yung seller is not the owner. Or hindi pa siya yung owner ng thing na yon na kanyang binibenta. Okay? So, example, if today, ngayon, si Pogi binenta niya kay Ganda ang specific car, okay? yung car pa rin na expander ABC 123, owned by Beauty. Binenta ni Pogi for, say, 500,000 pesos. Now, si Pogi promised to deliver the car the Mitsubishi Expander with plate number ABC123 to Ganda 10 days after. If the, on the ninth day, si Pogi binili niya kay Beauty yung sasakyan, yung Mitsubishi Expander one two ABC123 yung plate number. And then binili niya on the ninth day. Tapos on the following day, diniliver niya kay Ganda. So, the sale is valid because the requirement, yung requirement na yung seller must be the owner at the time of the delivery is complied with, di ba? Although, by the time nung perfection ng contract nila ni Ganda, hindi pa si, Be si Pogi ang owner, pero on the ninth day, binili niya kay Beauty, and so on the tenth day, diniliver niya kay Ganda. That's a good example for this. So, let's proceed with Article 1460. Actually, Article 1460 to 1465, this discusses on the object of sale. So, Article 1460. A thing is determinate when it is particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class. Siguro naman by now, I no longer need to discuss what does determinate means. Na-discuss na to sa obligation and contracts. Determinate meaning specific, di ba? Hindi siya generic. Or eto nga, 1460, particularly designated or physically segregated from all other of the same class. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng determinate same. Now, let's proceed. The requisite that a thing be determinate is satisfied if at the time the contract is entered into. The thing is capable of being made determinate without the necessity of a new or further agreement between the parties. So kahit hindi pa determinate, but is determinable. It is capable of being determinate without a need of a new agreement. If kailangan nyo pa ng gumawa ng bagong agreement in order to determine the object of your contract, then meaning hindi talaga siya determinate yung object na yun ay Actually, it is even questionable kung meron bang perfection of contract on the first place, di ba? Well, let's take an example. At if si Pogi and si Ganda entered into a contract of sale nga, which says that Pogi will deliver to Ganda or will sell to Ganda one of his cars at meron siyang sampung sasakyan. And without giving any description kung anong sasakyan yun. The price is 500,000 pesos pa rin. So later, silang dalawa, they could not agree as to kung sa ang sasakyan ang ibibigay or ni Pogi to Ganda. And so, question, can Ganda compel Pogi to deliver any of his cars? So the answer is, hindi. Bakit? Kasi, the contract is a void. One of the essential elements nga ng valid contract of sale is dapat yung object must be determinate. And so, a thing is determinate when it is particularly designated or physically segregated from all of its other of the same class. So, eto, walang description as to kung saan. E meron siyang sampung sasakyan. ba? So, that's it. That's a good example for Article 
1460. Proceed na tayo kay Article 1461. Things having any potential existence may be the object of the contract of sale. The efficacy of the sale of a mere hope or expectancy is deemed subject to the condition that the thing will come into existence. The sale of a vain hope or expectancy is void. So, sale of things having a potential existence or insurance parate versus the sale of hope or expectancy. Ito naman, impsho spay. So, again, things having a potential existence may be the object of the contract of sale. Pwedeng maging object ng contract of sale ang mga bagay na according to Article 1460 ay things with potential existence. Ito yung mga future things kasi nga hindi pa sila nag exist at the time of sale. So, example ng things with potential existence na pwedeng maging object ng sale. All of Pogi's rice harvest next year or pwede rin the wine that a particular vineyard is expected to produce or predating young animals not yet in existence okay so there is a difference between a sale of an expected thing and the sale of hope itself kasi dito sa sale of things with potential existence it is expected na if the thing does not materialize the sale is not effective. Pero dito sa hope, it doesn't matter if yung expected thing materialized or not. Kasi yung hope itself, yun yung importanteng meron. The hope itself validly existed. So pag ganun, valid yun, pwede siya. In contrast naman, pag yung hope is vain. Kasi in that case, void. Ay kita mo talaga siya sa kay article 1462. Now, another difference ng dalawa, dito kay with potential existence, ito ay subject to a condition that the thing should exist. So, if hindi na exist in the future, there will be no contract by reason of absence of an essential element. Diba? Walang subject matter, right? Well, let's take an example later pagkatapos natin i-compare tong dalawa. Now, dito naman kay hope, it produces effects even though the thing does not come into existence. Hindi mo rin masasabi na walang subject matter kasi nga yung subject matter is yung hope mismo. Okay? Another difference. Yung sa first, it deals with future thing. Etong kay hope, it deals with present thing. Yung mismong hope mismo, okay? Nag-i-exist na siya. Magandang halimbawa dito is yung sale ng valid lotto ticket. Whether the ticket wins or not, the sale itself is valid. Unless nga, it is a case of vain hope, which is expressly stated in Article 1461 to be void. So, let's take an example para mas maintindihan natin ito. If ngayon, For, say, 10,000 pesos, si Pogi binenta niya kay Ganda ang kanyang future harvest of palay on December. So, the price was already paid by Ganda to Pogi. And so, on December, pagdating ng December 2021, pag wala palang harvest, si Ganda pwede niyang ma-recover from Pogi ang kanyang binayad na 10,000 pesos. Kasi under Article 1462 nga, if the expected thing does not materialize, the sale is not effective. Okay? Kasi subject to condition nga siya na yung thing should exist. So, pag hindi nag-exist in the future, like in this example, magiging void yung contract kasi kulang na isang essential element which is the subject matter right so in the event naman na si Ganda pala ay hindi pa nagbayad ng 10,000 10, pesos then Pogi cannot oblige Ganda 
to pay because after all yung agreement is without effect like as if no sale so let's take an example dito naman sa ano sale of hope halimbawa ganito yung nangyari si Pogi binenta niya kay Ganda for 10,000 pesos pa rin yung lottery ticket number 012345 unfortunately kinabukasan the ticket did not win the prize, okay? So, in this case, si Pogi, he cannot, I mean, si Ganda, he cannot recover the 10,000 pesos na binayad niya kay Pogi for that ticket. Dahil, nung binili niya yung lottery ticket, what she is buying actually is the hope that that ticket, na yung ticket na kanyang binili for 10,000 pesos, will win 1 million pesos, di ba? Ganun. So, I think malinaw naman yung example for sale ng hope or expectancy. Now, papaano pala if yung nangyari is ganito? If the draw was actually made yesterday, so kahapon pa pala nag, nangyari yung draw for that ticket na binili ni Ganda. So, in that case, si Ganda ay makaka-recover or marirecover niya from Pogi yung kanyang bayad. Bakit? Because the contract is void. Bakit? Kasi yung binili ni Ganda is actually a vain hope or a hopeless, I mean, a hopeless case. Kasi, di ba nga, yung draw for that lottery ticket pala is nangyari na kahapon. Di ba? So, paano pa siya mga magkakaroon ng hope. It is actually a vain hope. So, that's it. That's an example of sale ng hope or expectancy. Tapos, yung vain hope naman. So, ano pa ba? Well, moving on, we will be discussing further yung kinds of thing. Ito yung topics from Article 1462 to 1465. Ano-ano nga ba mga things na to, di ba, na dinidiscuss natin. So, Article 1462 talks about goods. Tapos, si 1463 or Article 1463 uh, talks about the undivided interest of co-owner. Things din daw yun. And then, Article 1464 Undivided shares in a specific mass of fungible goods. Yan. And Article 1465, things subject to resolutory condition. So, simulan na rin naman natin. So, a thing could be goods, okay? According to Article 1462. The goods which form the subject of a contract of sale may either existing goods owned or possessed by the seller, or goods to be manufactured, raised, or acquired by the seller after the perfection of a contract of sale, in this title called future goods. There may be a contract of goods whose acquisition by the seller depends upon contingency which may or may not happen. So, traditionally, uh, specifications of goods are movable and Tangible, okay? Traditional specifications. Talaga yan. Then, when you say movable, literally, yun yung move from one place to another. Like any of your personal properties, like yung phone mo, laptops, or jewelries. Yan. Now, pag sinabi mo namang tangible, those that can be touched, yung may mga physical nature. Pero, however, as the world become digitalized, nagkaroon na rin tayo ng goods which do not have any physical nature. Yun yung mga intangible goods like the mobile apps, yung mga games, music, and other digital content. Those are goods pa rin, intangible goods. Okay? Sabi ni Article 1462, goods includes yung existing goods owned or possessed by the seller. I think there will be no question about that. Second, future goods to be manufactured. Okay? Example dito, yung sale of a milk bottle to be manufactured pa lang. Diba? Raised. So, yung sale ng yang of animals that, yan, yun nga, erased pa rin. 
tapos acquired by the seller after the perfection of the contract of sale. Yung pagbibenta ng seller ng isang lupa kung saan bibilhin pa lang niya din, di ba? That is called here after acquired property. And then yung goods, his acquisition by the seller depends upon a contingency which may or may not happen. So, an example dito is yung ibibenta ko sa'yo yung sasakyan which my father promised me or promised to give me if makakapasa daw ako ng bar exam. So, pending that, um, binenta ko yung sasakyan na pinramis ng father ko sa akin. Okay? So, malinaw ba? That's Article 1462. Let's proceed with Article 1463. The sole owner of a thing may sell an undivided interest therein. Okay. Sale of undivided interest in a thing. Undivided interest is also referred to as ideal or abstract share or yung proportionate share. Ganito yan, mas maiintindihan natin siya through an example. Eto. If Pogi owns a one hectare land, Now, as a sole owner, pwede niyang ibenta yung entire land mismo or pwede rin portion of the, that land by meets and bounds. Pag ganyan, siya ay magiging sole owner pa rin ng remaining portion na hindi niya binenta. But to give example sa Article 1463, si Pogi pwede niyang ibenta yung alikot portion ng 1 hectare land niya lang, say 500 square meters, to ganda. Now, pwede niyang ibenta kanyang undivided interest over the land without an identifying or specifically designating yung portion na binenta niya. Basta binenta niya lang, kalahati ng 1 hectares, or I mean 1 hectare, as to which part, hindi pa niya na-determine, hindi niya dinesignate kung saan yung meets and downs. So, yung undivided interest lang na one half ng one hectare or 500 square meters nga, ang binenta niya talaga. And so, dahil dyan, Pogi and Ganda will become co-owners. Right? So, yun yung example ng sale ng undivided interest. Okay? Well, another example to better understand this. If Pogi dies and leaves his one hectare land to his two children, say, meron siya dalawang anak, si Ganda and si Beauty. Now, si Beauty and Ganda, sila ay magiging co-owner ng one hectare land na pamana ng kanilang ama na si Pogi. Ito yung one hectare land is actually co-owned equally by Ganda and Beauty. Meron silang undivided interest over that property or yung proportionate share nila na 500 square meter each for each of them. But then, hindi pa na-determine kasi wala pang partition agreement, hindi pa nila dinivide. So, pero pending that, pwede na nilang ibenta ang kanilang undivided interest over that land sa kanino man, okay? Yung sale na kanyang undivided interest is magiging limited nga lang to the portion which may be allotted to her. So, kung binenta ni Ganda yung share niya kung saan yung undivided interest niya over that land. Tapos later on, kung ano man yung uh, more pupunta sa kanya after ng termination ng co-ownership, yun yung naibenta niya lang din dun sa kanyang buyer, okay? Magiging limited siya to the portion which may be allotted to ganda after the termination ng co-ownership, after nagkaroon ng partition agreement or division of the thing. Okay? So, that's Article 1463. Sana malinaw. Okay? Now, let's proceed with Article 1464. Medyo mahaba tong provision na to and I don't want to read this. I want to simplify this kasi madali lang naman siya. Madali lang yung concept na pin, you know, sinesend niya sa atin. Okay? So, sale of share in a specific mass. Unang-una, fungible goods. It talks about fungible goods. Ano ba yung fungible goods? It refers to the goods that cannot be used without consuming them, okay? Like yung rice and other raw materials. Ganun yun. 
Anyway, to simplify Article 1464, kayo na yung magbasa, okay? Tapos, eto lang yung simplification na gusto kong tanda nyo. Ganito lang siya. Pag daw yung quantity ng mass is more than the quantity sold, mas marami kesa sa yung nabenta, the parties will become co-owners, okay? Pero, second rule, pag yung quantity of the mass is less than the quantity sold, the buyer becomes the owner of the whole mass and the seller is bound to make good the deficiency, which should be of the same kind and quality. Unless nga daw, mayroong stipulations to the contrary. Okay? Now, let's take an example to better understand. Now, ganito. If Poggy is an owner of a rice stored in his bodega, kung saan yung exact number of sacks is still unknown. Hindi niya pa, hindi niya alam kung ilang sako ng bigas nga ba ang meron sa kanyang bodega. Now, etong si Ganda, bumili siya kay Poggy ng 100 sacks of rice. If later on, It turns out na yung bodega ay mayroon lang talaga, I mean, mayroon namang sobra pa, 150 sacks of rice. Then, Ganda becomes a co-owner of the two-third of the entire mask. Kasi she will now own the 100 sacks out of the 150 sacks na nandoon sa bodega ni Poggy. Now, pero if yung nangyari is ganito, Meron lang palang 80 sacks of rice sa bodega ni Poggy. Then, Ganda becomes the owner of the 80 sacks of rice and Poggy must supply the deficit of 20 sacks of rice na dapat ay of the same kind and quality doon sa binili ni Ganda. Okay? It's as simple as that. Okay, wag niyo nang pahirapan ang sarili niyo. Let's now proceed to Article 1465, the last provision na i-discuss natin for this video. So, Article 1465. Things subject to a resolutory condition may be the object of the contract of sale. Sabi ni Article 1465, yung mga things which is subject to a resolutory condition, pwede rin silang maging object ng sale. It's as simple as that. Siguro naman, I do not have or I do not need to discuss further about this resolutory condition. Okay? It's uncertain event na kung nangyari, ma-extinguish ang obligations. Pwede. Pwede mong mabenta yung object na subject for subject pa ng resolutory condition. Okay? So, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe and click that bell button to update you sa new videos upload namin. Thanks again. Bye!